The Falling Walls Science Breakthrough of the Year 2023 in Art and Science. Breaking the wall to musical medicine. How music information research explores new cardiovascular therapies. Elaine Chu, King's College, London. On November the 9th, 1989, I was a student on the Stanford University campus that was still recovering from the Loma Prieta earthquake that hit 23 days before. Thank you. I'm just very delighted to be here today to share some of our work on musical medicine. What you just heard... Sorry. What you've just heard is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, the second movement, Andante con Moto. And what we do is we collect signals like these while people listen to music. Uh, this includes ECG from people's hearts, as well as respiration, your breathing, and uh, here the RMSSD, which is a measure of heart rate variability, which indicates the degree of relaxation when that is high, or stress when that is low. Today, our work combines music, mathematics, and heartbeats, and I'm going to tell you how we came to do this work, and how we are conducting this research. So I will start at the very beginning. I started as um, a young child, born into a family of mathematicians. So I thought I was going to be a mathematician. But to everyone's surprise, I was actually good at music. And um, so that, that caused a conundrum. What was I going to do? Music? on mathematics, and I managed to combine the two in the spiral array model, which you see here, which is a geometric model for tonality, which allows you to listen to music or play music and have the chords and keys analyzed at the same time. And here's a demonstration of live music being analyzed. Pitches are mapped to the outer helix, and inner, the e inner double helix show the keys, and the triangles are the chords. But at this time, I'm going to now tell you this was mathematics and music, but how did we get to heartbeats? 
As a child, I had an arrhythmia, an arrhythmia that would double my heartbeat sporadically. So if you're sitting down at 60 beats per minute, this is 60 beats per minute. And if that was doubled, you'd get 120 beats per minute. And that's all fine and good, you can do that. But if you were exercising at 120 beats per minute, then you get 240 beats per minute, which sounds like this. So my heart would do this, and it was terribly uncomfortable, especially when you're exercising, and normally when I'm swimming in a pool. And uh, luckily for me, during my lifetime, a treatment was found for this, uh, for this uh, heart condition and that was ablation, so I had the treatment, and it was cured. However, two years later, I had another arrhythmia, and this time I was thinking, oh no, this one is not regular. It doesn't do the same thing, it's a new one. And it would do irregular beats, and it was unpredictable, and it was very fast, it was debilitating. I could not take care of my daughter. And this time, luckily, again, there was another treatment for this, and I had another ablation, but this time I thought I should better do, I'd probably do something about this. But um, I was very fortunate in that both my arrhythmias were cured, and the person who treated me and conducted these procedures is here today, and that's Professor Pierre Lambiazzi sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm standing, walking around, clearly not debilitated. And while I was in the cath lab, however, I saw beautiful charts, graphs of these signals. As, and as someone working in music and mathematics, I thought, this really looks a lot like the kind of work I do. And, and I can do something with this. Could I please have my data? So I took my data, <laughs> and I made music of it. So this was an... That was the first one. Uh, that was at some time during the day from a halter monitor. Here's another one. And then we have Piazzolla. So I make quite a number of pieces like that. I even perform them in concerts. People loved them, the press loved them, but I brought these nuggets to the cardiologist and they thought, oh, very cute. <laughs> you know, uh, it's very nice of you to take heartbeats and move music with it, but we want to treat people. We want you to take music and move heartbeats. Could you do that for us? So that was when I started working on music for therapeutic purposes. And uh, Professor Lambiazzi was my collaborator in this. And our first project w was working with pacemaker patients. And pacemaker patients are great because they already have leads inside their heart. Uh, we could download data from inside their hearts while they were listening to music. And I insisted on live music because it had a greater effect. So one of the pieces I played for them was uh, Chopin's Ballade Number no. 2, which is very dynamic and has lots of big changes. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a sample of this. So it begins like this. And this is the audio signal that you see up there. And then we can compute things like that. So you the audio signal. From there, we get the loudness of the signal, the tempo of the signal. And you can see here a lull and a crazy section that comes up. So we go back to the lull. I show you what happens in the lull.
and so on. And uh, luckily, after the lull, uh, the beginning calm bit comes in, it returns, and we go back to... So this was very useful because while this was happening, we were downloading data from people's hearts, and these are pacemaker patients. So here are three heartbeats from one of the patients. So we have three equally, equally spaced heartbeats. They're equally spaced because these are pacemaker patients. What a pacemaker does is it paces the heart at a rate that is pr pretty much unchanging. So their heart rates were not changing, all we were doing was ca computing, uh, calculating from this, measuring when the heart beats and when it recovers enough to beat again. And so when a person is stressed, that recovery period is shorter. It's able to beat much more quickly. And here is an example of what happens to one of the patients. Uh, you can see before uh, the crazy section in the lull period, there are some very high values. The heart's going, we beat, oh, we got lots of time, okay, recover. But right after we go into the red section, that red section, you immediately see a really low value, and that's a sign of stress. But when the calm bit comes back again, you can see another high value. The next example focuses on data that we collected from Dennis Noble. Dennis Noble, well, apart from being a former teacher of our collaborator, Pierre Lambiasi, uh, is a famous physiologist who came up with the first viable mathematical model of the heart in the 1960s. He has written a book called The Music of Life. And whenever he gives a talk about the music of life, he starts with this piece of music, uh, the Schubert Trio. And if you don't know it, it goes like this. It's well known, it's used in a lot of movies. Uh, but he had not heard it live, and we invited to him to come hear the trio, uh, my trio here, shown here, uh, playing the uh, Schubert trio for him, and we recorded his physiological signals. This was a piece that meant a lot to him, so it was very important that we wanted to capture his response to it. You can see his respiration echoes what is happening in the music signal, and uh, the respiration gets quite ragged afterwards when I just said ad hoc, would you please say a few words? And uh, here I'm going to take a segment of this, and I invite all of you to breathe along with Dennis. Uh, follow his breathing signal, that's the purple line, and when he breathes deep, more deeply, breathe more deeply. When he holds his breath, hold your breath. Pretty big breaths. Hold your breath. So this is how music affects our breathing, and by affecting our breathing, also our hearts. Not only does the listener breathe, the players also breathe. So we are interested in how the player's breathing mirrors structures in the music and potentially could be information for how the listener also responds to the music. So we've collected data from a player and a listener you might have seen around here. Um, 
But this kind of work requiring computer systems and architectures uh, that are quite complex requires a team. Uh, shown here is the London team that is working on this research. And before that, um, also the Paris team that has worked on building much of the software that you see shown today. In the final example, I'm going to play one more piece for you, but I will tell you how this piece works and how composers and performers generate tension arcs and releases to create feelings, physiological feelings, in the listener. So here's an example of the building up of tension and the release. And how this works um, is, can be visually seen here. Uh, but first, I need to tell you that you have the audio signal here, but also you see the notes that are being played. And what happens in the music is we have D minor established as the key. But then we have this dominant, the A, going A, A, A. A, 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 and then D. Okay, so uh, we've built up this expectation as D is coming back, but there's this A, 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 and we don't know when D is coming back, and finally it comes. And that release and that feeling of coming home is what causes this uh, feeling of tension buildup and release. So for the player, in this case, there's lots of difficult parts in the beginning, and the player is rather stressed at this moment. But once the most difficult parts are over, uh, you know, the player is home free and is relaxing. But for the listener, though, the listener's thinking, oh my god, the player is really working hard here. But hey, this actually is quite enjoyable, but wait a minute. What's going on? When am I going to get back to the return? And that causes tension, and you see the heart rate variability go down. And then when the release comes, the heart rate variability is going, ah, okay, all right, we're done. And so at this moment, I would like you to pay attention to your own breathing, your own heart rates, as you listen to this passage from Strauss Burlesque.
to. <laughs> Imagine a world. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely. Where we can model people's reactions, individual reactions to individual moments in the music. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.